This is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. We are facing some very difficult and challenging times, not only in our lives, but also in our urology practices. Joining me is Dr. Jess Mandel. Jess is uh, the Kenneth M. Moser Professor of Medicine, Chief Division of Pulmonary, Critical Care and Sleep Medicine, and Vice Chair for Education, Department of Internal Medicine, UC San Diego. Uh, in San Diego. Dr. Mendel, as a pulmonary specialist and critical care specialist, you truly are on the front line with this uh, COVID-19 challenge. Can you just briefly share what your views are of this pandemic? And then we'll get into a couple other quick questions. Sure. Obviously, a, a big challenge to the health system, a big challenge to people around the world. Um, I, I would say I'm extremely impressed by the professionalism and altruism of everyone who is involved in this fight. Great. Uh, you know, I just I just saw in the San Diego news that the uh, cases are rapidly rising here, but at least as I heard a couple hours ago, the death rate is zero. And I know this reflects on your expert care as well as your colleagues and all of the local hospitals. So I wonder if you could uh, comment about that and um, what you might be doing uh, that's unique, if anything. Yeah, excellent question is sort of what should we follow in this? And uh, this pandemic is a little unusual because the supply of tests for the disease has been so constrained that I think the case numbers will, will jump up as more testing becomes available. But that's unclear if that means that the uh, disease and the transmission is actually accelerating. So I think interpretation of those numbers is unclear. Others have suggested that we really look at the death rate um, since that's more of a hard outcome. And I think those numbers are in some ways more reassuring. Obviously, every, every death we have from this is a, a tragedy. But uh, right now, at least, we're not seeing exponential increases in those numbers. And my hope is that in the week or two ahead, as the social distancing uh, really kicks in, that, that we'll see improvements both in terms of cases and in terms of mortality. Just a quick question. There's a lot of uh, excitement, sort of light at the end of the tunnel with testing and, and drugs, but um, it seems that chloroquine is uh, emerging as something that's readily available. I know I took it a long time ago when I traveled for malaria. Are you using that or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly don't want to investigate any drug that shows potential promise. I think situations like this are challenging because on the one hand, we want to uh, provide any drug that may be helpful to patients as soon as possible. On the other hand, we want to know what we're doing. So, uh, you know, our, our preference at, at UCSD is really to enroll patients in, uh, in uh, clinical trials to the extent possible so that they can benefit from use of the drug potentially, but um, we can really learn as a community what the, the, great, the best approach um, to treating it is. Look, let me just drill down to and get specific with our urology audience. I, I think they're concerned and confused about what to do in their practices. Uh, and, you know, quite honestly, so far, I think most medical organizations have been fairly quiet, uh, sort of waiting yeah. to see what happens. What, what are your recommendations for a urologist for their office? Should they close it? What should they keep it open for? What should they do with ORs, uh, elective cases, and so on? Sure. So there's really a couple of challenges, I think, to urologists. The first is caring for patients in their practice who may have uh, COVID-19, who may have a lot of concerns about having COVID-19. So certainly, you know, educating oneself about the condition um, is, is important. The Centers for Disease Control is probably the single one best clearinghouse for information about the disease. I think the larger challenge is the infection control and prevention challenge. Um, and there, I think all of us have a, an important part to play. I think uh, it's important to really limit patient visits to those that are um, absolutely essential to be done in person, to try to convert patients to uh, video or telephone visits when possible, and to postpone more elective things, at least for a, a couple of months, if at all possible. I think in the uh, face-to-face -face encounters, it's important to train staff um, and patients in proper use of personal protective equipment and um, make sure uh, 
patients are, are well informed about how they should self-isolate, self-quarantine if those measures are, are necessary. Well, I know at uh, UC San Diego, you're doing everything you can. I know when I came to the clinic on Wednesday, they checked my temperature before I walked in, asked me a few questions and basically try to convert people to telemedicine, most of them, but there were some, some patients that need to be seen. Um, let me just uh, finish up by this one, one question on testing. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and what's out there? And then are there, the final thing, are there any websites that you write, might recommend that we can put up on our uh, Grand Round site? Sure. So I, I think testing is important primarily as a public health measure so that we can really instruct patients who need to self-isolate to do so in a way that we wouldn't if they suffered from a, a less worrisome upper respiratory virus. Um, in some ways, I think it's, it's less important than it has been portrayed. Uh, we're going to treat anyone who has upper or lower respiratory tract infection symptoms um, and a, a, a sort of story consistent with COVID-19 as if they have the disease in terms of the personal protective equipment we recommend in terms of the care. I think it's important that we really get the word out to patients that our expectation is that the uh, vast majority of, of people who are infected are going to have a mild to moderate course that is perfectly managed um, symptomatically by themselves at home, um, that being tested as positive doesn't mean you come, need to come to the emergency room, doesn't mean necessarily you need to be admitted to the hospital and that we really want to have uh, dangerous symptoms in terms of shortness of breath or clinical deterioration so that we can focus our attention on those patients who need the help the most um, versus the vast majority who are going to be okay without specific intervention. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add at all? No, I, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, I, I would just add that as a, a student of medical history, um, epidemics, pandemics are unfortunately not something new, um, although they're new to us in our generation because of how fortunate we've been, but that all epidemics, all pandemics come to an end. It's a, a, a significant challenge, but it's a time-limited challenge, and I'm, I'm very confident that we will get through it. Thanks for those encouraging words. Uh, we appreciate you taking time for your busy clinical practice. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Crawford. Bye-bye.